Well, welcome to the 1220 demonstration. My name is Kevin Lothridge, and I'm the CEO at the National Forensic Science Technology Center. Our demonstration team today is Rebecca Carter. She is a certified uh, crime scene photographer. We have David Epstein, who is the COO at the NFSTC, as well as an ABC uh, certified forensic scientist. And we have retired First Sergeant Clint Arhelger, who is our current trainer for the EAC at Fort Bragg. What we're going to do today is talk about actually what would happen if uh, material is collected on, on the battlefield and then sent in for exploitation analysis. The demonstration will be using field technologies that are currently fielded with some that are in the future fielding stage. Uh, we'll also show how the tactical information can be gained by trained personnel outside of the conventional laboratory setting and feed the intelligence pipeline. The scenario for today is that uh, we've been delivered to our uh, center a um, component device from an IED that did not go off. It was part of a uh, recovery investigation. It included the device as well as um, other information that came out of the vehicle. We couldn't bring the whole vehicle, so we brought the car door behind us as what we would typically do in this area. So our analysis team is going to get to work now, and we actually have the material here. The first thing in any investigation that you would do because a picture is worth a thousand words is actually go ahead and photo document the device. Uh, Rebecca here is going to actually take it out, uh, noticing we use good procedures as far as covering the material with paper, taking the material out of the bag so we can have a complete chain of custody and photographing and documenting the material. These pictures can be used later to compare other devices uh, and actually be used for intelligence information. Even in an expeditionary setting, we can train people how to handle, collect, and document evidence not necessarily as you would see in state and local law enforcement, but in a rather expeditionary manner. Once Ben is done photographing the, the device, it's going to be passed on for additional exploitation, and she will turn her efforts over onto the, the car door. David is now going to disassemble the device and actually start collecting multiple types of uh, material for analysis. He'll be swapping for DNA material, both on the phone handset as well as the wire twist. The phone has already been previously on-site exploit exploited to get tactical information that leads the, uh, the other team onto uh, additional targeting sites. David's using a two-swab method that allows the device to be swabbed and one, one swab tested quickly and the other one sent for additional analysis. David will now uh, process the phone and other components for fingerprint residue. He's actually using a spray fingerprint powder, and the interesting thing about that is it's quicker, it doesn't make so much mess, and even out here in um, the direct um, breeze blowing, it gets the material where it needs to be for the fingerprint to be collected. This and David's developing the, the, um, the prints on the door. We'll pass the material down to Clint Arhelger, who's actually, looks like there's some residue on there that he's going to get off and do a color metric test on. And also, as we searched the vehicle, there was a vial of white powder that Clint is going to go ahead and exploit using uh, Raman spectroscopy. If you notice on the card where there's not a lot of extra powder around there, the, the prints came up extremely well. David's now going to set these up for Becky to photograph, and then he will lift those and submit those for analysis. So as we can see, we actually have a, a, a color positive on the uh, color metric explosive detection test. Clint's now completing the other analysis. As the team works on this, you can see that in a short period of time, they've looked at several different modalities of evidence and are able to collect that information and, in the real world, submit that either electronically or physically to another location. The white vial we have here actually was uh, positive for ammonium nitrate, and uh, the Raman gives that tactical information so that they can turn back around and look at other incidents in the area that contain uh, ammonium nitrate. Clint is now completing the second part of the colorimetric test. So to recap what we've done, the cell phone's been exploited for tactical information. It's been photographed, the device has been documented, uh, the fingerprints have been lifted both off the device and the vehicle. We've swabbed the device for DNA, 
We've actually swapped it for explosive residue and identified a white powder found in the vehicle. Um, all those things will be sent forward for additional analysis. Fingerprints will be uploaded and submitted for searching against the database. DNA will be submitted for testing. Uh, CellX information is already being exploited for tactical information. And explosive was being determined to be um, ammonium nitrate and some white powder. So expeditionary analysis is a key element to the soft toolkit and can be made available on a broader basis. This is not only a soft specific tool, it's actually used across the forces. 